Welcome back everyone, Dr. Faust here once again to bring you another Hero Forge painting tutorial. This time we are going to the monsters and we're getting a little furry. We're going to be painting a goblin and working on his wolf mount. So let's jump into it. Our wolf here is looking pretty flat, so we're going to add some fur to him by painting with texture. I've already mentioned texture in a previous video. Essentially all it is is thinning your paints less, and in this rare case we actually want the brush strokes to show up while we're painting. In this case we have the paint thin to about a 1 to 2 paint to water ratio and we are using very short brush strokes so we actually leave strokes, i.e. texture, on the wolf. As of yet I haven't mentioned the actual brush stroke too much when painting. Normally you paint at a somewhat 45 degree angle, maybe a little less with the brush, but you can see now we're here we're we're using the tip of the brush more because we want that obvious line to recreate the hair. I will also mention that I'm playing this at regular speed and also I have the clips a little bit longer because the brush stroke here is important. I want to make sure that's coming across. We are starting with the top of the wolf and our darkest color and working it down towards the lightest. Uh, you can do the opposite if you prefer, if you like to work from lightest to dark. I'm just, I use this method because this is more familiar to me. As we work our way down the wolf, you will note that we're adding texture to the top, but as we bring each layer down lower on the wolf, I switch to more of a standard layering technique. That's because those areas are going to get another textured layer on top, so there's not much point in putting the texture underneath. When it comes to painting animals, you do want to do your research and try to get an accurate represent representation of how an animal looks. A wolf, for example, isn't just gray or brown. There's a lot of color variations, and the more that you could uh, translate that onto the miniature, the more realistic it's going to look. Another important thing to note when painting an animal and recreating hair like this we want to follow the proper direction of the hair on the animal. So most it starts on the back and kind of works its way down in a 45 degree angle. As we get to the legs, we've kind of somewhat given up on trying to do the texture because trying to do it on very small legs, very small parts like this, is much more difficult than doing it on the large surface areas. This isn't the only way to apply texture to an animal like this. There are a few different ways, which I'm going to go over in a future video, but I will say just now, if you, if this is a bit too intimidating doing all these layers like this, you can just do the final highlight and maybe the first or second shade layer with texture and then paint the rest in a standard layering technique. So there's just at least some impression of hair on the animal.
Animal eyes have to be handled differently than human eyes. Most animals, you don't see the white of the eye because they have a larger iris. So that's why we just paint the eye socket in with yellow and then dot in the pupil here. That's it for our wolf. We're gonna move on to our goblin now and we are gonna go with a yellow tinged kind of traditional Dungeons and Dragons goblin here. We are starting off with a base coat of English uniform and I'm covering that with a heavy layer of sepia ink. In case you're wondering why sometimes I use paint as the shade layer and then sometimes go for ink, well, it kind of depends on the model and uh, my mood when I'm painting. In this case, there's a lot of little nooks and crannies on the goblin, so we want to uh, use the ink so it can get into all those little crevices and give us our shade. We do have the paint a little bit thinner than we did on the wolf here. Not too much though. We are somewhat doing layering at this point. Uh, however, because the goblin is so small and then therefore his fingers and nose are very small as well, we don't want the paint too thin because it's gonna get be too, uh, too hard to control. So we do have to paint at around a one to three paint ratio as we paint all those small little details. When it gets to the arms, which are a little bit bigger, we could have the paint a little bit thinner so there's less brush strokes showing up at the end. For his tiny little mouth, all we have to do is paint it black and then pick out teeth using bone white. It's actually not important to exactly paint the teeth where they are on the model, as long as you get a bunch of off-white little dots. This is a good way to paint monster teeth, not a good way to paint human teeth. If you're painting human teeth uh, on, well, a human or humanoid, you just want to do a straight line of off-white. doing. Uh, painting teeth on a human this way and you end up with that Sonic the Hedgehog the movie look. We can use the same method that we used on the wolf in lots of different situations. Not necessarily recreating hair, but just adding texture to the miniature. So on his little leather cap here, we are using texture once again, but it's more of a stippling motion. Uh, we still have the paint a little bit thicker than normal and it just adds a little bit more character to the piece. The difference here is that we are applying the texture, the stippling, in accordance to standard highlighting and shading rules. Uh, if there's overhead light, that's where we put the highlights towards. Uh, if you were paying attention with the wolf, we actually really didn't do any highlighting or shading on it. All the painting we did was to recreate the color pattern on a real wolf. If we were to add highlights to that, well, that's gonna make it really, really complicated and we would actually lose the color pattern that we just painted on the wolf. Stippling is a really good way to paint natural leathers that are not dyed because leather has a 
a lot of color variations in it so we can add stippling to help recreate some of that and once again we are applying it in a standard traditional overhead lighting scheme and also we can go a little bit higher on the highlights in a few of the little stipple spots to recreate damage to the leather at the edges. Somewhat related to texture and stippling, you can use the same technique to create some very simplistic freehand patterns. Like here, I'm just painting small little lines on the saddle, but I'm painting them using dots because that's a lot easier to paint just a few dots than it is to paint a very straight line. You can actually do some very simplistic freehand work using dots. Just dot in your image and then slowly flush it out with a broader brush stroke. And here is our finished Triumph Goblin and Wolf. So texturing is one of those rare cases where I'm not going to harp on you to thin your paints as thin as possible. No, we actually want them a little bit thicker, although we still have to thin them slightly. As you can see, you can do a lot with textures and keeping your paint a little bit thicker. You can add details that are not actually on the model and it really helps spicing up a very flat area. And you actually may find this easier than layering. If you're having problems trying to figure out exactly how to layer, I know it's, it's a very high learning curve for layering to get your paints thin to the proper consistency and building up the layers properly. Try having a little bit uh, thicker and try using texture technique just to paint things, just to see if it works better for you. So it, it does add a unique look to the miniature. You don't always have to be recreating a certain surface texture. And I've seen a lot of painters nowadays who are using a lot more texture for basically everything. Uh, there's a lot of painters who just paint using dots. So that's something you may want to try, uh, but Hopefully this gives you some ideas of ways you can use your brush stroke and use your paint and thin the two a little bit different ratio than normal. But uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.